This is the collision course that we are on. I don't think Minnesota loses this series to Denver, and I certainly don't believe Oklahoma City is going to lose to Dallas. Kyrie in the playoffs, I think he's won two playoff series since they won the title with Braun Braun. So really what I don't trust is individually in the playoffs what they do. Irving dancing, prancing, pulls up, three-pointer, bang! Williams, loose ball, shot clock at two. Irving has to put it up, falling away, the three around, and down! When it comes to the biggest surprise of the 2024 season, that is undoubtedly the Dallas Mavericks, led by Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. As now for the second time in three years, they are back in the Western Conference Finals. And Dallas coming to this season, they weren't viewed as a contender or a serious threat in the Western Conference. As according to the odd makers, the seventh highest odds to make the finals out of the West. Behind Phoenix, Golden State, both LA teams, and even Memphis. And give Dallas's front office credit, in the past seven months have hit home runs at nearly every turn. First off, drafting Lively, an absolute steal. This guy in game six, crucial boards and free throws as a rookie. And then of course, the midseason trade, getting PJ and Gafford for essentially a bag of chips. And PJ in this game, numerous big time shots despite foul trouble and not making a shot to the fourth quarter. Now, the biggest home run Dallas hit was trading for Kyrie Irving when his value is essentially zero. I mean, looking back at that trade, Kyrie Irving, a bona fide superstar, got traded for Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, and some scraps. Looking back at that trade, one of the biggest steals in recent NBA history. And Kyrie's value post-2023, I mean, to just refresh your memory, this guy was viewed as the cancer of the NBA and completely untouchable. Even the LA Lakers, who are only desperate for superstars' big time names, didn't want to touch Kyrie Irving. That's how bad it was. Do you think that Kyrie is worth all of this drama? No, he's not. He's not worth it at all. A matter of fact, um, let me say this straight up and down. I think Kyrie Irving should retire. Uh, how does Kyrie look now? He looked like a fool. He looked crazy. Who? Kyrie Irving. Okay. We are witnessing one of the most delusional athletes in American history. And when it comes to Kyrie's nicknames, he's got a few of them. Uncle Drew, Kai, and somehow World B Flat. And those nicknames, I mean, pretty decent. But after Game 6 vs. The Thunder, I think Kyrie's new nickname should be the Closeout King. As now this dude's records in closeout games for his career is a perfect 14-0. And looking at this year's postseason, the closeout game versus the Clippers and Thunder, averaging 26 points per game, 58.8 true shooting percentage, and a 50% from three with a plus minus of plus 24. Kyrie Irving undoubtedly is the closeout king. And the apology tour for this guy needs to keep on rolling. And one quick side note I do want to throw in there, when it comes to Stephen A. Smith, Kyrie's biggest critic, on the NBA pregame, he was in attendance and at their table. But somehow in the post-game interview, when Kyrie got interviewed, Stephen A. Smith was absent. Now look, maybe a coincidence, maybe I missed something, Stephen A. Smith was there. But what I saw Stephen A. Smith was there pre-game, but post-game absolutely vanished. Just something I wanted to note. Now looking back at Kyrie's play on the court, in this series versus OKC, a pretty rocky series, at least offensively as in six games total, had three games of 12 points or less. Very un kyrie like And the first half of game six, once again playing passive, two of five shooting, four points, two turnovers, he was a minus 10. Now, second half Kyrie just flipped the switch, aggressive off the bat, off the jump. That's the best version of Kyrie. As in the second half, 18 points, a game high, four made threes, and the fourth quarter, eight points, also a game hot. And possibly the biggest momentum shot of the game was Kyrie's three that went in, out, and then in again. Dallas, to that point, that shot, they'd been so close to taking the lead, they'd fall all the way back, but couldn't get over the hump to actually take the lead and maintain it. And looking at the overall stats 
of second half scoring versus Oklahoma City. In this series, 10.2 points per game, first on Dallas, and ninth for the postseason. His shooting splits, of course, off the charts and phenomenal. But very important to note, his defensive rating was top eight among second round players. And that's the part about Kyrie's game that goes very, very overlooked. His defense in the playoffs is in the best of his career. At to this point, ranks first in steals and opponents are shooting only 41% when Kyrie guards them. So while this series versus OKC wasn't his best offensive work, when it mattered most, he got it done and defensively stepped up time and time again. And looking at Dallas' marquee player, that of course is Luka Doncic. Now, Luka in these playoffs, not really typical Luka, the 30-point triple-doubles, the 40-point games, the eye-popping stats. But Luka so far in his playoff run is doing the little things at the crucial moments. And one thing I've noted in both series, OKC and the Clippers, Luka's mid-range game is on point. And my one critique of him, shoot more shots from the mid-range. Not those deep threes, contested threes that you're really struggling on. Look at Luka's mid-range stats. In the first round versus the Clippers, ranked third in made shots per game on astounding 59.3%. Now, second round versus OKC, the volume was down, still top five in makes, and percentage-wise, exactly 50%. And for the entire postseason, 2.2 makes per game, 26 total makes, both top three on 55.3% shooting. If you're looking at players in 2024, that is a high volume mid-range shooter. And looking at game six versus OKC, one of the rare games where Luka Doncic had his three ball rolling. But with the game hanging in the balance, which shot did Luka go to when it mattered most? The step back mid-range. Luca, please, analytics be damned, take more mid-range shots and stop settling for deep threes and contested threes. Now, speaking of big-time clutch shots, what this series came down to was Luca and Kyrie out SGA in the clutch. And look, for SGA most times, this dude was kind of on his own, the only creator, only score, late in games. Unfortunate for him. But for Dallas... Two of the best fourth quarter players and clutch players in the NBA. As looking at Luka's fourth quarter stats, 5.5 points per game, ninth in the postseason. Third goal percentage, 50%. True shooting percentage, 55%. And assist, 3.0, which ranked first. Luka, compared to SJ in the fourth quarters, outdueled him in nearly every game. And points created in the fourth quarter. Luke out of the entire NBA, ranked first by a mile. When you have a duo like Kyrie and Luka, who are fourth quarter killers, that's already hard to overcome. But in game six, when PJ's hitting shots, Derek's making clutch shots, and Lively's getting extra offensive rebounds, it's virtually impossible to overcome all those factors. And while Dallas' offense is highly impressive, their evolution on defense, really post-trade, has been simply astounding. As looking at the numbers, Dallas pre-All-Star break, 19th in defensive rating. Post-All-Star break, 13th. And last 15 games of the year, ranked first in defensive rating and went 12-3 during that span. And looking at their two superstar players, Kyrie and Luka, far from all defensive players. But in this year's playoffs, this season in general, their defensive effort and energy has improved drastically. And when your two best players, two best offensive players, are locking in on both ends of the floor, it becomes contagious team-wide. And I don't want to jump ahead too much, but Dallas versus Denver or Minnesota, they're going to be heavy, heavy underdogs. Do I think they'll win that series? Probably not. When you have Kyrie, Luka, the defense playing the way it's playing, anything's possible. So that right there is the end of the video. And once again, Kyrie Irving, the apology tour continues, and Luka Doncic back in the West Finals for the second time in three seasons. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.